thank you, Beatrice, and the World Around team for having me. It's a real pleasure to be here. My name is Dima Saf. I'm an urban forester and rewilder based in Amman, Jordan. And I was an architect in a previous life. Um, and throughout my career in architecture, I increasingly sensed the need for ecologically inclusive practices. And I would love to share with you today some of our work to rewild cities and uh, restore urban ecosystems. Cities around the world evolved in geodiversity and biodiversity hotspots. They were places of unique landforms, rich soils, generous water resources, and spectacular flora and fauna. Yet, unfortunately, the growth of cities has for long been on the expense of these native ecologies that made them possible. And the modern landscapes in general tell stories of lost rivers, lost forests, lost nature, and lost abundance. Uh, this is my city, Amman, and looking at its barren, pale face, uh, many would wonder if rich ecologies had ever existed here. Um, once known as the city of waters, Amman today sits on the edge of a desert landscape. Its valleys that once flowed with gushing rivers uh, have transformed into corridors of concrete, asphalt, and honking cars. And this is basically the setting that we chose to pioneer the implementation of a Japanese method for forest creation despite the uh, skepticism that we faced from local experts. Um, known as the Miyawaki method, the forest creation process starts with deeply understanding the native vegetation and its dynamics. Bare soil in nature is in constant uh, change to, um, and to evolve into more developed vegetation moving through a very specific sequence from herbaceous plants to woody uh, shrubs and trees until it eventually reaches a matured climax forest. And uh, this change uh, keeps happening until we reach the stable and state that is favored by nature. As a fellow forester describes, the soil dreams of becoming a forest. And this process in nature might take 100 years or more to unravel. With the Miwaki method, we are able, through soil engineering and careful design of plant community, uh, to expedite this process and establish an equivalent of a 100-year-old forest in just 10 years. Uh, and we can create self-sustaining, thriving ecosystems as a new model for urban landscaping. Yet, how can we foretell the details of lost ecologies? How can we read what the climax forest looked like in a heavily degraded landscape like Amman? So we started with surveying the existing forest north of Jordan. We studied photos of the city when it was first established, uh, trying to find hints of the native vegetation that used to be found. We studied uh, traveler accounts, surveyed literature from the 1700 and 1500. And the amazing evidence that we have found was in the research uh, done by uh, paleobotanists and archaeologists analyzing the fossil pollen that is found in the soil to this day. Uh, like messages in a bottle that is thousands of years old, we can actually read the past vegetation. Uh, and we can know, you know, from the evidence that we have today that the old brown present-day landscape was dense forests of oak and white pistachio. So we started uh, with our first rewilding project in Amman in 2018, uh, establishing a tiny forest in a private backyard south of Amman. We started with soil building, preparing the soil uh, for the forest planting, and introducing 18 native species 
and bringing them back into the city and establishing the first Miyake forest in Jordan and the Arab region. And we have transformed what was a backyard loan into a newborn forest. And it was quite astounding to witness the transformation of the landscape and how in about two years, the site was transformed into a dense, multi-layered forest. So dense that one cannot really walk into it. Attracting local biodiversity and housing many of the vulnerable and endangered species in Jordan, inside the city. And we decided to expand the experiment to other parts of the city. And we arranged community planting with children, volunteers, people from all walks of life, joining the tree planting and becoming part of the change, and reintroducing them to the native species of their land. And we uh, collaborated with the municipality having a series of these uh, forests in different parts of the city. And it's amazing to witness how they would evolve into dense pockets of green, bringing nature closer to people, and how they would attract biodiversity and becoming home to feral urbanites, um, also housing different foxes uh, who became frequent visitors. And in general, it's not just the growth that we see above the ground, it's also the transformation of the soil having an active fungal network and a living soil life. And in addition to our work on native forest creation, we have also um, designed different structures for urban wildlife as part of our urban rewilding work. One of these projects is the Urban Pigeon Tower that was part of Amman Design Week. Um, recent uh, research shows that Earth may be home to one trillion different species. Yet our consciousness as architects and urban designers and planners is ecologically one-dimensional. So we call for a rich, multi-species ecosystem and how we can rethink cities and create niche habitats for the different creatures that share the city space with us. Uh, the urban pigeon tower houses um, nest shells for uh, feral pigeons and the interior garden as a source for um, rich fertilizer for soil building. And it also, the design provides um, a sneak peek into the inner lives of pigeons, uh, providing uh, interesting uh, opportunities and beautiful encounters with people and children with these often overlooked creatures. Another project uh, that we have done is the Insect Hotel that is part of Darat al Funun exhibition. 40% um, of uh, global uh, insect species have declined in the past decade. And each year we kill trillions of insects due to pesticide use. Um, insect hotels are tested solutions that would provide niche habitats. And this particular design uh, targets uh, nesting, uh, it provides uh, nesting tubes for solitary bees, um, pollinators, and other beneficial insects. The uh, timber pillar also houses uh, nest boxes for house sparrows, another species that is uh, threatened due to urbanization and habitat loss. So through these different interventions, whether it's the uh, urban pigeon tower, um, uh, or the insect hotel, we are addressing species that have been around for millions of years. Pigeons are the descendants of dinosaurs. Insects have been around for 400 million years, yet in the past decades they have been um, endangered and their population is heavily affected due to urbanization uh, and habitat loss inside the city. So how we can acknowledge their right to the city and provide these habitats uh, and rewild the cities uh, to be as inclusive as possible uh, to these different creatures. And in an age of 
uh, increased sameness and alarming, alarming uh, monotony when we look at interiors, architecture, and cityscapes around the world. We believe that urban rewilding is a much needed opportunity to create authentic landscapes that are deeply rooted, that speak of the natural history of the land and the unique identity of the place. And it's an opportunity to um, honor the land and its genetic diversity. And as part of that, uh, we have been roaming the uh, landscapes of Jordan, uh, harvesting seeds of different native species with volunteers, children, friends, family. Uh, it's more of a citizen science uh, project or small movement where we would be protecting uh, and maintaining the genetic diversity of the different uh, native species. And we are lucky to have uh, been collaborating since 2019, establishing the very first private nursery for uh, native sapling production, uh, growing this year over uh, 50 different species, 12 of which are endangered or critically endangered in Jordan. And it goes beyond native forest creation. For us, it's uh, part of maintaining the genetic diversity that is millions of years old and how we can keep it alive uh, in the soil and in people's lives and memories. Thank you.